Hello, this is part six on our Bible study on the Nativity of Jesus Christ. During this Bible study, we'll discuss how shepherds were notified of the birth of the Lord Jesus in later visit. We concluded the last Bible study on Luke chapter 2, verse 7, when Jesus was laid in a manger. We'll move on to verse 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. To me, it's pretty neat that the angel appeared to shepherds. It could have been that, especially in Bethlehem, that shepherds were a common occupation, and keeping sheep was a normal part of life, and that these shepherds happened to be the closest to where the Lord Jesus was born. But there are shepherds noted throughout the Bible, or at least keepers of sheep. For example, back in the beginning of Genesis, with Cain and Abel, we're told that Abel was a keeper of sheep. Also, Rachel, we're told, kept her father's sheep when Jacob met her. Also, in the bloodline of Jesus, Abraham was noted as having herds and herdmen that worked for him. One down to Jacob and his sons also. For example, when Jacob and his sons entered into Egypt, Joseph advised them to let Pharaoh know that they were shepherds. And a shepherd is also a humble occupation. As it stated here, every shepherd is an abomination unto the Egyptians. Even King David himself was a shepherd before he was king, for example. Now therefore, so shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheepcote from following the sheep to be ruler over my people, over Israel. There are also references to God and Jesus as shepherds. For example, in the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. Also, with regard to the crucifixion, Jesus notes a Bible verse where it talked about the shepherd being smited and the sheep of the flock being scattered. So I think it could be said that shepherds are pretty significant in the Bible, and it's just neat to me that God chose to make this announcement to shepherds. So here we have this scene where the glory of the Lord is shining around these shepherds when this angel appeared to them, and they're sore afraid. We'll pick back up with verse 10. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Here the angel advises the shepherds how Jesus had been born just that day and that they would find him wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. The angel also tells the shepherds not to fear and gives this good news, good tidings of great joy and that it would be for all people because a Savior was born, which is Christ the Lord. I'd like to draw your attention to this word Christ here. A lot of times, because we often say Jesus Christ, it almost sounds like we're using that as Jesus' last name, and it might even lead some people to think that is the case. But really, I believe that this word Christ is really more of a title. My understanding is that the word Christ is really the Greek word for the word Messiah in the Hebrew. Here we have a verse in John where some of the disciples were excited to see Jesus and they advise, we have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. See, the Messiah was someone who a lot of people in Israel were looking forward to seeing because of prophecies in Psalms, Messianic Psalms, we call them, in the Old Testament forecasting that the Messiah would come. See, the meaning of the word Messiah in the Hebrew and Christ in the Greek is the anointed one. The Messiah or Christ is the anointed one. 
So here the angel is telling the shepherds that their savior, the Messiah, has just been born. So this is really pretty big news. And I believe a lot of people in Israel during this time and in times before were eager to hear this news. And one of the first people that God chose to deliver this news to were shepherds. Moving on to verse 13. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. So here we're told that all of a sudden, with the angel, a heavenly host appears. This reminds me of another time in the Bible when a heavenly host suddenly became visible. In the Old Testament, the prophet Elisha, who followed Elijah, who God used to do a lot of mighty miracles, had a similar type situation. The king of Syria had sent a military force that surrounded the city where Elisha was. And when Elisha's servant saw this military force, he became afraid. And Elisha said, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. And he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Maybe in the case with Elisha and the shepherds, the heavenly host was already there, but only became visible. I really love what was said, this famous Christmas saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. Especially noting First and foremost, to give glory to God, who is supreme. It had to have been an amazing sight. Let's move on to what the shepherds do next. Moving on to verse 15. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying, which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things, which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. So we're told that the shepherds, they go with haste and then they do find Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. The humble circumstances that the Lord Jesus Christ was brought into this earth in. Also, they are excited, we're told, that they go and they tell these things, and also glorifying God. I like also here how it points out that Mary pondered these things in her heart. As we pointed out in the first Bible study series on the genealogy of Jesus, it appears that these early chapters in Luke are focused on Mary a lot, and they contain information that's not really in other Gospels, and this seems to be very personal to Mary, how she kept these things and pondered them in her heart. Thank you for your time. Lord willing, maybe we'll have another Bible study in the future.